Hello and welcome to Global Matters, a program that brings to you global issues which shape the world, issues of international and global agenda, determine our national and common interest in Nigeria. My name is Tunde Labi. Thank you for uh, taking the time to join us on the program together today. And thank God it is another Friday. We commenced a three-part series on insecurity three weeks ago to look at the causes of insecurity in sub-Saharan Africa, particular focus on Nigeria, as well as join millions of Nigerians to call on Mr. President, President Mohamed Bari, to get on top of the problems as the Commander-in-Chief of Nigeria's Armed Forces. One state in Nigeria that has consistently come under attack from either armed and violent s men bandits or other criminal gangs uh, will wreak fit, um, vital half a work on several farming communities in the state is Benue. Benue is predominantly a farming state and acknowledged as a food basket of Nigeria and it continues to witness violent attacks on its farming communities. The governor Samuel Autumn has been an outspoken and a very fierce critic of those who are saddled with the responsibility of keeping Nigeria safe and secure but I feel in that responsibility, the governor's brave bluntness against the failing system has caused him to be vilified by people who want the status quo to remain, even his governor colleagues. Recently, indigenous of the state in the United States of America, the mutual union of the team in America through their representative in the Nigeria House of Representatives, Mark Bella presented a petition to the parliament, raising concerns about the safety and security of their families and loved ones in Benue State. Unfortunately, the presiding officer, the deputy speaker of Nigeria's House of Representatives, Honorable Ahmed Idris Wasi, refused to recognize the petition and the petitioner on the grounds that the petitioners are Nigerians in the diaspora. Therefore, they do not have the local standard to present a petition on matters affecting them, their families and loved ones living in Nigeria. Today on the program, our focus is on the relevance of Nigerians in diaspora to national development. The need to keep this issue on the front burner has become pertinent following the drama on the floor of the House of Representatives as Honorable Mark Bila, representing Benue, Gwe East, West uh, Federal Constituency, tried without success to convince the presiding officer, Honorable Ahmed Idris Wasi, to either accept the petition or refer to the relevant committee. In addition, the continued disregard for Nigerians in the diaspora by this same political class and elites in the country is further reflected in their failure to allow Nigerians in the diaspora vote in national elections in their uh, respective countries of residence and international parties even by many Afghan countries. Today, more than 23 Afghan nations grant voting rights to their diasporas, including Cape Verde, Algeria, Angola, Kenya, and the biggest country in Africa, Nigeria, will not. The video of the unfortunate incident during this session went viral, though the office of the deputy speaker issued a statement saying the video was doctored and did not reflect the true situation on the floor. Notwithstanding, the viral video caught the attention of Nigerians in the diaspora organization, NIDO, which in a press statement condemned the deputy speaker's action, insisting that his comments on Nigerians in the diaspora were disparaging, derogatory, and the use of public office to vilify the whole Nigerians in the diaspora, calling on their Nigerian citizenship uh, to question. The diaspora organization noted that Nigerians in diaspora have contributed immensely to Nigeria's economy through their remittances. According to the World Bank, Nigeria is by far the top remittance recipient in Africa, accounting for an annual remittance of $2.3 billion in 2004, now to $3.23 uh, billion in recent years. In fact, Price Water, Waterhouse Coopers estimated that remittances from Nigerians in the diaspora will hit $34.89 billion in 2023. This is a huge contribution, far above in all remittances from Nigerians. And it is equivalent to what Nigerians in diaspora can do. And it's above the financial contributions of the same political class that they've made into the economy, despite the daily allegation of corruption and underhand financial practice, uh, practices among these political elites. On the program today, we shall attempt to measure the contribution of the Nigerians in diaspora to national development and ensuring President Muhammad Bari takes security and safety of Nigerians very seriously. My name again is Tunde Labi, and joining me on the show today 
we have uh, expected, we hopefully we'll be joined by the lawmaker representing uh, Benue Gwe East and Gwe West Federal Constituency, Honorable Bila. Hopefully he's currently out of the country, he's in the United States. We expect that he'll be joining us uh, on the program uh, at some point. But in the studio with me is Gosin Azu. Gosin Azu is a social and welfare director of Nigerians in the diaspora. Europe. He is with us in the studio and Azu, the welfare director of Nigeria and Diaspora Europe, will be taking on a couple of some of these issues when we come back from this break. Don't go away. Mr. Speaker, I have a petition from the Mutual Union of the Thief in America against the federal government of Nigeria. And the issue has to do with the ancestral land of the Thief people that seem to have been possessed in recent times through various attacks and the fact that they are languishing in IDP camps till date without any intervention. With your kind permission, Mr. Speaker, I want to lay this petition before this honorable house. Did you say Thieves in America? The, the petition is from the Mutual Union of Thief People in America. Yes, there's a very if they're, if, they're, if they're in America, could they really be an interested party here? Do they really know what is exactly going on? Okay, yes, they do, because they have their family members and their people here with them. And they are, as a pressure group, making this, bringing this petition because they believe that they are also stakeholders. Mr. Mr. Miller, I don't, I don't want to make a blanket statement regarding those who are in diaspora. If this petition is coming from those who are within the country, I believe it has a very good standing. No, no, but these people not, living, no, living in America and then coming to lodge, it, it now... No, 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 there are Nigerians who are not all resident there. Some of them are just studying. Some of them just went there to do courses. Because uh, this is not the first time we have presented petitions, even from those who are not resident that is in why we the have speaker the has to allow the, the, the petition to be laid until he's convinced. I'm not convinced that somebody from America should come here and then be laying issues in Nigeria. I'm not convinced. Okay, Mr. Speaker, would you allow for the relevant committee to also no, look at it? First, it's, it's, when you read the clause says, with the permission of the speaker, it means that the speaker is convinced of the issues raised and the local standing of the person talking. Okay, Mr. Speaker, you know we have a diaspora. All right, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. This is a very important and crucial topic, very close to my heart uh, on the show today. And joining me, I have colleagues uh, in the diaspora who are on the show who are joining us to look at this issue. The video you just saw there uh, was a reflection of how the Nigerian political class um, treats um, um, uh, Nigerians in the diaspora and their thoughts about them. I'm joined by the president of the Nigerian diaspora, New Jersey, America, and also the welfare director of Nigerians in diaspora, Europe, uh, live with me in the studio. But first, let me go to New Jersey, where we have Dr. Kazim Bello, president of Nigerian diaspora in New Jersey. Uh, Dr. Uh, Bello, thank you for taking the time to join us. When you saw that video, what were your thoughts? Thank you very much, Mr. Labi, for yeah. bringing up this very important uh, topic at this point in time. Uh, <laughs> when I first saw it, uh, uh, it looks like uh, one of those uh, social media stuff that uh, you probably see people just play ranting around. And um, it was only, in fact, I woke up to saw it, uh, I guess, at the beginning of the week or late last week. And eventually it turned out to me after a couple of threads on on the social media and i also searched in the news in the nigerian news uh i it was actually true um i don't think he was called for he was very very uncalled for uh there are things that uh, a lot of people have been commenting and of course uh, like you rightly <laughs> said a lot of nigerians in diaspora are really aggravated about that they they were really uh, a little bit angry, uh, uh, but the fact the fact is not about what transpired at the house. 
but two important languages that came out of that uh, conversation or altercation between the two honorable uh, members of the house two important things number one the, the speaker the deputy speaker said that he does not the nigerians in the actual organization or whatever organization does not have a right let's let's look at the word a right now the constitution of nigeria as all of us know guarantees civil liberty freedom of and rights and privileges of every citizen it's a every citizen every citizen of nigeria he didn't say you have to be in ghana or you have to be in us or in russia or china to be a citizen it's a every nigerian citizen so the issue there is that if you if the speaker is saying that the organization does not have the right it means that technically the everybody that is outside nigeria living in nigeria or resident in nigeria as at that time of that pronunciation has been disenfranchised as a nigerian mm. that is very insulting then the second thing that the speaker said which is uh, a little bit uh, uh, very concerning is that when you speak when you sit in a position as so vital very important as the deputy speaker of the house of a whole 200 million country people you do not base anything you are doing on your personal conviction hmm. the the speaker keeps saying i am not convinced i am not convinced so the question i'm asking myself is convinced about what convinced about what the constitution said convinced about what your rule of uh, uh you uh, house procedure say or convinced about what a uh, nicom diaspora commission acts which was passed in that same house what he says so he shouldn't have come up and say i am not convinced and uh, he could have actually said on technical ground uh we may look at this in a different way but he kept saying he's not convinced that tells me or a lot of us that he's pushing a personal uh, in, in sentiment into it, which is wrong. Those are the two things that actually infuriated a lot of uh, diaspora. All right, thank you so much. I, 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 I believe what your thoughts uh, today on the program actually uh, represent the thoughts of Nigerians in America, being the president of Nigerian diaspora, New Jersey. I, I want to take that to be true. Uh, I also have joining me the uh, welfare director of Nigerians in diaspora, Europe. We've heard the opinions as represented by the thoughts of the president of NIDO, New Jersey. What are Nigerians in the United Kingdom? I know I'm aware you're based in London, but you are also that of NIDO, Europe. What are they saying once um, they saw this video? <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Tunde, and uh, it's my great pleasure being here this afternoon. Um, as someone who represents the well-being and the goodwill of Nigerians living uh, in the UK and across Europe, uh, numbering over 10, 15 million people across the continent, um, hearing this um, very disturbing statement by, sorry to use this word, left dishonorable member of the <laughs> house. Let's just, sorry let's to just use to just that, that. Uh, because yeah, uh, yes. when people are referred to as honorable their languages must remain decent must remain articulate must remain humane to those whom they represent either known or known uh, but uh, the statement by this deputy speaker of the house of representative in a hollow chamber where due respect is, re is accorded to the represented communities and indigenous groups of the nation state called Nigeria should be a bit of an accorded respect. Whether they are good or bad people, it doesn't matter. You must be guided by your statement when you represent people in the hollow chamber. Most of us in the diaspora are highly disappointed. Um, we, are, we are disheartened um, that Nigerians are so to say by their deputy speaker seems to disregard the potentials and the due influence 
of the Nigerians in the diaspora, whereby an issue that is raised by citizens, because when you say diasporans, diasporans are citizens, and moreover, they are citizens of a particular nation. Either they are citizens of a dual nationality or a citizens of a single nationality. And as much as they are recognized as Nigerians, they have the right, as much as those who Not are Notwithstanding where they are. Right doesn't there. matter where they are, because we all have to understand what diaspora means, because people misinterpret what diaspora means. Diaspora means people that are scattered away from their homeland. And we all have to understand that the essence of the scattering of people from different, different nations or nationalities globally is for them to be able to find other ideas that is worthy enough to bring back home and make a better society for their people. And Nigeria is not the first diasporans outside. We remember, if we look back to the Bible, the first people that went into diaspora were the Jews when they were sent into exile by the Babylonians. And what happened? The Jew diasporans came back to create what today many of us call the country called Israel. And so also has been the case of many other nationality diasporans, such as the diasporans of the Chinese uh, origin, diasporans of the Indian origin, diasporans of the Bangladesh and Pakistan origin, diasporans of the Ethiopian origin, diasporans of the Kenyan origin, even the diasporans of America have done what we are trying to do as diasporans today for Nigeria. And this fourth generation diasporans of Nigerians are not the first to think back home. We all remember the likes of Namdi Azikiwe, Awolowo, Michael Lokbara, and the rest of them, Mbadiwe and the rest. They were all diasporans who came back and fought for the independence of Nigeria from the colonial masters. The diasporans are very strong elements of any building of, of any society rebuilding any, any 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 breaking or collapsing society the hope of that nation to become what it ought to be in the future relies on their diasporas because of their external exposure their external uh, uh, knowledge broadening that they are going to use to bring about uh, uh, a holistic and positive change to that country for somebody in that position to deny the citizens of Thief in Benue State residing in the United States, the right to make a petition in a house where some of them traveled thousands of miles to come and vote, even vote for him, even though he's from Plateau State. It's rather unfortunate that the two people who are involved in this argument are from the Middle Belt, from Plateau and from Benue. And it's rather unfortunate that when you look at the Nigerian diasporans outside Nigeria, they are the minority. This is one of the first times that we are finding minority indigenous groups of Nigerians living in the diaspora, bringing a case of their people back to the, to, 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 to the national attention. Case. Of a very, very serious case where you have your family members uh, being slaughtered on almost on a daily basis by some faceless, unknown, um, dangerous elements. And so we are concerned. We are, and, and, and somebody sitting out there saying they do not have the rights because they are sitting in the comfort. He used the word, they are sitting in the comfort of their house in America. Unfortunately, today, we, they may say we, we're sitting or living in the comfort of our homes in America, in London, in Germany, in France. But then, what entails him? What gives him the right? What gives him? If the diaspora have no right to come and present a case, in the National Assembly as representing the interests of the indigenous people living in the, in, in the homeland, what gives him the right to travel for holiday, gives him the right to or travel send his children for medical, to abroad. give him the right to come and speak, demanding for people to make room for him to come and speak in the House, in the Congress in the United States, demanding for people to help him work out an arrangement to come and speak in the House of Parliament in, the, in, 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 in Westminster, demanding for people to make out a chance for him to come and speak in the Parliament in Germany. What gives him the right? What okay. gives him the right to come and speak outside Nigeria if we, the diasporans of Nigerian origin, have no right to come and present our case at the National Assembly? Then we are saying to all National Assembly members, you have no right to come 
and speak in any parliamentary house in the United in, 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 in Europe or in the United Kingdom or in, in America. We are going to make a we are going to make sure even within the international parliamentary system or, or engagement that whenever a parliamentarian a, a, a parliamentarian from Nigeria or a, 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 a serving member of the National Assembly from Nigeria is called upon or invited to come and speak in any of those houses, we have we are going to stop them from speaking. Because if they stop us, the diasporans, from making our case at the National Assembly, we are going to stop them from making the right. case for Nigeria or for their own people in the international community. All right, and Azul. we are going to find, we'll find uh, out uh, who is uh, going uh, to be begging uh, for each other. Uh, uh, Azul, uh, um, tourists don't really make a wrong. Okay, let's let's calm down. Let, let me go to New Jersey. Let me go to New Jersey. Dr. Kazim, <laughs> Dr. Kazim. Yes, sir. Yeah. We can see the passion with which um, the uh, Nido Europe actually spoke. But does what the Deputy Speaker do, um, was say, what he did on the floor that they reflect what the political elites actually think about Nigeria? That? So you remember the struggle for voting rights. When will this ever happen? Do they believe Nigerians in diaspora actually have any rights either to contribute to national development apart from taking their money to either make a say, send petitions, or even vote at all? When will this ever happen? Yeah, thank you very much today. Um, once again, um, uh, let me before I go into the comment about the feelings in the house, uh, what we feel about the goings on in the house. Uh, let me say first of all that uh, uh, the there is no doubt that we have very compassionate uh, honourables in the house. Uh, they have been voted there. Some of them are doing their best. Believe me, uh, I'm somebody that comes to Nigeria and try to engage uh, on some of our leaders. And I do this not because I'm looking for anything, but it's, it's, it's a way to balance your thought process. Um, when I was in Abuja, just shortly before the pandemic, which was last year, February, uh, I had an opportunity to attend a conference. And that conference was heavily represented. Uh, we have people from the... Uh, Dr. Kazan, I'm afraid this may be your last thought on the show because I, I'm being told that I've got like less than two minutes to do. Oh, okay. So let me let me quickly... Yes. What I was trying to say is that the Azura voting right is on course. Uh, we don't have time to discuss that now, but it's on course. I have a reason to believe that a lot of things have been done towards that direction. So we should leave it alone. Time to find out what has been done than to criticize that nobody's doing anything about it. It's been done, but there's a lot of process leading to that. Secondly, uh, about what happened in the house, it's it's actually an isolated issue. I do not think personally that it represents or represented uh, the majority of what the members think about. Uh, because most of the members of the house that saw the video later expressed the feeling that that was actually not right. What Honorable Idris was say should have done, instead of saying that the video was doctored, was to look at the video and tender an apology. There's nothing wrong as a leader when you are wrong, accept you are wrong. Please, that is nothing wrong. Uh, a simple apology will have ended all this uh, issue and then the case will have been closed all right that okay. is what i have to say for all right dr kazim thank you so much for joining us all the way from new jersey to be part of this discussion though i have very limited time azu your final thought on this well my final thought would be like uh, my colleague from new jersey said uh, it would have been thoughtful for the deputy speaker to, to just apologize. come up and make a, a holistic apology to the diasporans we are all citizens of this country and moreover the fact is that we know that this is an isolated issue but yeah. then somebody has to speak out somebody has to correct the situation and that is what we are going to we are, we are, we are all working towards to making sure we correct the situation and and for one thing that i want nigerians to know if the diasporans one day wake up and say we are not sending money to this country for one month this that's economy, a whole 34.89 billion dollars coming in the, the, annually the, 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 the diaspora, the what diaspora, the the diaspora the support economy. this economy with about 60 percent of its gdp money comes from the diaspora and if at any point we are highly offended we are grossly offended we are stampeded by some elements or some people who feel that the diasporans have no relevance in this country we are going to lay an embargo and that embargo is going to be a stoppage of any remittance to Nigeria for the next one month. And let's see who is going to cry out. Okay, all right. <laughs>
as the thank you so much uh, for taking this time. I, I know it's a long distance from London to Nigeria, and so you're you're really really boiling to speak your mind on the show. <laughs> well, we're really, Hopefully, we'll be able to bring you back here. home. Day. Here, I'm also very passionate about <laughs> this as well. All right, Dr. Kazim, thank you so much for your time. As you hopefully before you return to London, we'll be able to bring you back and yeah, have I'm a say on some problems. other issues. Thank you so much. This is how I can go on the program. Very interesting, and I'm very passionate about this. Stay out of trouble, stay safe. COVID is still out there, and keep keep safe. My name is Tunde Labi. Sincere appreciation to the entire team that has made today's program very successful. See you again next Friday.